Hello everybody, welcome back to the Cold Frame DIY Part 2. And uh, as you can see, it's all painted on the bottom and the edges and it's dried overnight. It actually took about four or five hours to dry and it's not tacky at all. I wasn't sure if this would dry completely but it has so that's good. I've still got it on my hands from yesterday, mind you. It really is sticky stuff. But that's what we need to waterproof the wood. So what I need to do now is lay this down and take some measurements of the length of the back and the front and get some sheet material cut, some plywood, maybe some OSB board, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to work out what materials I've got left. And then we need to cut some more 2x2 two two for bracing at the top of the frame, etc. So I'm going to get those measurements done and get some wood cut. And when I've got all the pieces cut, then I'll, I'll bring you back and show you how I put it all together. Just one little point on measuring and cutting timber. I've got several tape measures lying around the place and when you measure something, so when if, say I measure the length of this frame to cut the timber, make sure you use the same tape measure to do the measuring of the frame as you do to mark out the wood. And that's because tape measures always go loose on the end. So if I was to use this tape measure to measure the length of the timber that I need on the frame, and then pick up this tape measure and actually mark out what I need to cut on the wood, the chances are those two measurements will be different because the ends of the tape measures always go loose. So there's a little tip for you. One thing that I want to just check before I go any further and cut timber is that I have actually built this to the right length. So I'm going to put the wind, just lay the windows on here or next to it just to make sure because it would be really disappointing if I were to cut all the timber I've got, make the back, make the front, put the battens in and everything else and then find that I've made a mistake somewhere and that the windows are either too long or too short or whatever. So I did actually paint the outside of the windows with the bitumen as well last night. And that's going to be just perfect because what I actually want is the windows, you can see it's on the carrier, I want the windows to just overlap the outside of the frame. So that's going to be just about right and then there'll be a small gap between them in the middle. So that's, that's what it takes well. So I'm going to use the factory edge of the board again because I know that this is square to this corner. These two sides are square. So I'll measure from those because that end I've already cut so it won't be straight. So we want a piece 520 wide.
like in part one, I'm going to paint the back side of these boards before I screw them onto the frame, just to make sure everything's as waterproof as I can make it. And I'm going to put this board on first and then put the other board on, mark the exact length of it and cut it. So I need to paint this edge of this board here. Last night I put the brush, just wrapped it in the plastic bag to stop it drying out. That's the back and front pieces on. As I said, my pieces of wood weren't long enough to do a whole piece in one go, so I've had to put two in. But that's okay, I'm not worried about that. Um, and what we're gonna have to do is in the corners now, where the back joins the end panels and front panels, we're gonna put some battens in there and then screw the ends and the back and the front to those and we'll cut those two inches shorter than the depth of the back so that a batten can run along the top as well and that's what the hinges of the doors of the windows are going to get screwed to so I'm going to have a cup of tea and then that's the next job
So now everything's painted black. I've done the back, uh, I've redone the bottom, done the ends, I've done the front, and I've done the, the tops of the battens that are holding it all together. So that's the, the bitumen paint done really, apart from a bit of touching up maybe here and there, which I'm quite pleased about because it's a horrible thing to use to paint on. It doesn't run like a normal paint, it's, it's really sticky. So what I want to do now is give the inner frame a coat of shed paint. And it's really just to try and protect the timber as much as I can. Because obviously there's going to be a lot of humidity within the frame. And with watering plants and what have you as well, there's going to be water about in there. Now, I have considered drilling some holes in the base of this to allow for drainage and I've decided not to at this point I might do it later I don't know what I don't want to do is drill some holes and then leave the edge of the wood open inside the hole for moisture to get in I did think I could glue a piece of plastic pipe in the hole to try and seal the edge of the wood but I think for now I'm going to be quite careful how I water, have the plants in trays wherever possible, like the pots in trays, or even take them out to water them, I don't know. It's going to be one of those see how it goes as I use it I think. And obviously opening the windows during the day will help to vent any condensation and build up of moisture. So it's going to be a learn as I go, I think. Okay, so that's our one coat of fence paint, shed paint on the inside. And I have to say, it really is starting to look good now. I'm quite pleased. So I'm going to attempt to fit in one of the windows. And we will see how it looks. each hinge to start with, see how it looks. That's the wrong sort of screw. Let's try that one. Probably going to have to take that old cabinet handle off. That, that won't stop me just putting it on. Just for a bit.
just need to lift this window up a bit. Considering it's made out of scrap wood, two old cabinet doors and a few screws and a bit of paint, it ain't bad. And I need to put some more screws in the hinges and I need to let the paint dry and I need to treat the inside of this. Um, Yeah, that's that ain't bad. And what I'm gonna do I think when everything's dry is I'm gonna go around with a clear silicone and just go around all of the corners and joints and what have you to stop any moisture getting behind other pieces of wood and just do my best to try and weatherproof it like along the top here probably around the glass on the window I'll just run a real fine bead of silicon mastic some people call it mastic but a clear one not not a white like a bathroom one and when I've got it in position because this is going to sit on that workbench so these will open up against the fence so I will make a little latch or a piece of rope or something just to hold these back so the wind can't blow them shut and smash the glass. But maybe even a latch to keep them shut as well. Just a piece of bungee cord or something to a hook just to keep them closed so the wind can't because we get some really strong winds just so you can't lift it up and then bang it and slam it down but yeah I'm really pleased with that so I, I need my teenage son to come home from school now and I'll give him a pair of gloves get him out of his school uniform first give him a pair of gloves and he can help me carry it down the garden and we'll put it in position okay everyone well it's down here and it was quite an effort actually to get it down there out the house down some steps down a ramp negotiate all the corners of the garden and what have you but it's here now it's in the daylight I can see the odd bit that I do need to touch up but I can get that done that's not a problem and it works fantastic the doors and everything are great and what I am going to have to do is come up with a way of keeping them open I'll probably make a prop actually that locks in somehow so the wind can't bash them around but because up there the wind will definitely catch them and it will smash a glass so I need to do something and like I said touch up the paint put some sealant in there around all the joints and the corners and hopefully it'll last a couple of years two or three years and I'm sure it's going to be very useful for bringing on young plants at this time of the year so really pleased to be fair considering it hasn't cost a lot of money to make so Thank you for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this two part uh, DIY making of a cold frame and uh, if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed and you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more, I'm always doing projects in the garden, then please hit the subscribe button, then notifications and click all and you'll be notified every time I upload a video and if you would like to support the channel consider becoming a member 
there's a join button below if you click that it gives you various membership options and there's also a link in the description to buy me a coffee if you feel like doing so so thank you very much guys and i'll see you on the next one